Hey guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming, and today I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about a history lesson. Many of you may not know, but I'm an old school Warcraft player. Long history of Warcraft. But in the game itself, I made some very critical mistakes. My biggest strength was how well I was able to use a keyboard. I would kind of take shortcuts in the fact that I didn't use my mouse to select things. I would use my control groups. It would be the modern equivalent of say, calling someone a one a -er. But when I one a I'd just reach down and grab the unit and pull it back to safety. And that was what we called micro back then. Well, StarCraft as a concept has faster units that deal more damage and have lower HP. Such a method doesn't work in StarCraft. And honestly, I've managed to maintain a diamond rank for like five or six years straight. I'm not the best player, but I'm not so bad that I can't talk about the game. If I played more, I'd be able to get better. I know that in my heart. But, something that I did a video on within the last year or so was the importance of boxing. You'll notice that this is something we've paid special attention to on this channel, and it's because I've never really been that good at it. And I wanted to learn more about it because I thought it could help me develop my play. And I'm here to tell you guys that I was right. Just being able to box units, not having played the game in a very long time, I was able to defeat people that I wouldn't have been able to defeat when I kind of took a break from play. And it was literally on the power of boxing. But it wasn't immediate. And it actually took a friend of mine that I've talked to you guys about before, Carter Risk Vetzel. He um, showed me a website called Aim Booster, and contrary to what I had always been taught, which I had always been taught that higher DPIs are better for mice, he told me to get as close to 500 as I could possibly stand, and the moment that I felt like I was playing with a brick for a mouse, I probably had it set about right. This was bizarre. I didn't understand, and like... If I didn't really know that this guy could play and he was a grandmaster and he was a great guy who wouldn't lead me astray, I'd have probably dismissed it and never took his advice. But I didn't do that. So I lowered my DPI setting to as low as I could stand. I think it was like 1200 at the time because I was playing on like 3200 maybe, which was nuts. I barely had to move my hand on my mouse pad, but I also talked trash on all the Koreans who played with mouse pads that big. Cause I didn't understand, I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. I'll be the first to admit that. My bad. But anyways, lowering your DPI means your hands have to do a lot more work. Which means you can work in a lot more APM, that's gotta be how they're doing it. Or at least part of it. Your hands gonna be moving a lot more, your games are more intense, you start drenching in sweat, it's a more physical, exerted exercise. Which is cool, I love getting that deep into a game. But... Hey son man, we love you. But... When that... Sensitivity, where it, it's so not sensitive that you have to make these wide gestures and it becomes such a involved thing. It means these small, minute little changes are way easier to do. So if I'm playing at 3200 DPI and I can barely move my mouse and it's on the other side of the screen, it's gonna be really hard for me to move my mouse just a fraction and grab that unit, but not that unit. You know what I mean? So it makes sense, it makes logical sense. But how do you jump from using a high DPI to a low DPI with no in between? How do you train for that? Well, Carter had an answer for that as well, guys. Take a look at this website. It's called Aim Booster, which is awesome. There's a training. I've never done the training. I'm not really sure how that works. He told me to go straight to challenge, so I did it. It's aimbooster.com. So we're going to go to challenge. Now the idea here is to get your DPI, like I said, to where it feels like you're playing with a brick. And you're going to feel very uncomfortable. But guess what? If you lose this game, it doesn't matter. It's not going to go on your ladder record. And it's even less important than an unranked game. Who figured that was possible? So let's go here to challenge. I'm gonna come over here. 
I'm probably not gonna do so good. Oh, yep, see, I'm already, ah, I've already messed up. Guys, I'm really bad, let's just, yeah, let's try again, okay? So you see it gives me some accuracy targets to hit final targets. This is literally really hard to do while talking. Whoa! Anyway, so you're killing off these clusters, and as you can see, this is very similar to selecting like individual groups of lings or banelings or, you know, ling baneling warfare if your ZVZ is pretty weak. I highly recommend this. This made my ZVZ so much better. No! Alright, so 23 seconds. I think this is about average um, for like a platinum level player. So 77.4% accuracy. You can see my accuracy went way low when I started messing up. And you actually kind of begin to develop a pattern where when you do mess up, you begin to just notice that you like you snowball this girl like one screw up leads to like five and it just escalates from there but anyways we've got all this information so what do we do with it well my recommendation is before you ever play your first game of starcraft is to do five of these write them down we've got a uh, link here and actually i'll put a description a link in the description if you guys want to request access to this i'll give it to you and create your little tab right here just send me your um your name in the request and you guys can use this as well. I'll, I'll open it up for everyone. That's no problem. But anyways, we've got a little leaderboard here to just inspire some friendly competition. Let's come here to Shaft. Hopefully I've got something entered in here. Hm. I guess not. Anyways, it's been a while since we've updated the dates. Let's let's go here. Jordan used it recently, I know. Alright, so he's updated his dates for when he was using it. He did it for about two weeks. He was one of my students for a little while. Um, and you saw you lasted a minute and eight seconds the first time, 59 seconds. You can, you can begin to see when you're hitting your peak and like, you know, so right around here is when he's really starting to do well. And it starts to, to, to tip off here around number 10. But on average, he's getting a minute and 12. So worse, worse, better than average, better than average, worse than average, better than average, worse than average. You can kind of get an idea and a feel for this. His accuracy is usually pretty high, and let's see, when he was 137, his accuracy was actually the hot, well, one of the highest. It was here at uh, less than a minute, and then similar right here. So clearly, it's not just duration. We can also see the speed at which he's answering some of these. So, you know, 3.45, 3.62, that's kind of directly related to the duration, but it can be different. Anyways, if you had a hand ache or a headache or something, you'd write it in the comments just to know why it's affecting your performance. And then this gets you warmed up for the actual StarCraft gameplay. I say about five, that's what I've, I've discovered in my own timing and my own trials, but it's up to you. And in any case, this helps you become a much more precise player when it comes to your movements. But let's say you're the opposite. Let's say you were always really good at using the mouse stuff, but you're not so good with a keyboard. Maybe um, you didn't take keyboarding classes until like your senior year of high school or something. Well, here's a good website for you, and this is where I always specialize. So this is called TypeRacer, TypeRacer.com, and we're just going to enter a type race, and you'll see how it goes as we go along here. All right, so we're getting the, 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 the race ready. All right, so it's 92 words per minute. That's a lot less than I would normally get, but a little bit of lag from the OBS and honestly just, just I guess, showman's nerves. But in any case, this helps you as well. Look how, like, this gives you, an again, a practice environment that is risk-free. So I got my words per minute, 92, time, 40 uh, seconds, and accuracy, well, 98.8. I think Iceberg really screwed me up there. But um, 
Yeah, see, uh, I mistake. My biggest mistakes were an iceberg and entomological. I don't even know what that word means. Iceberg, I just thought it was two like, words, so. More than anything, those were my own brain issues, which shouldn't translate into a into a StarCraft environment. So that's always good. In any case, guys, hopefully this helped you in whatever you're struggling with. If so, let me know in the comments below. Like and share this video. Consider sponsoring us on Patreon. Even $1 a donation per month goes to helping us achieve our dreams. It helps way more than you could ever know. Thank you so much for considering. I'll see you next time. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.